So if I'm creating an instance from a single schema, then I know that all the tags in that instance come from that schema, and there's no reason to say for each individual tag what schema it came from. But once we start combining schemas, two schemas being used to represent the tags inside of one instance, we need to identify which schema each tag came from. And to do that, we use the concept of a namespace. Let me jump back and give you the, the concept of a namespace before we talk a little bit more about the mechanics of the namespace. The concept of the namespace is that each tag has to be related to a family or a set or a grouping of tags that um, are all defined in the same place. So just as you have a first name and a family name, a last name, the last name defining the set of people you belong to and the first name defining your particular um, individuality, tags can have that as well. You might consider the namespace to be their last name. So all the people in my family, or at least in my um, immediate family, share the name Boyko, and we all have individual first names. And even if there's another Bob out there, they're not, he's not from the Boyko family. Right? So that's what a namespace does. Conceptually, it defines tags into families. In practical terms, what it does is it says, what schema did this tag come from so that I can have an instance that obeys, at the same time, multiple schemas? Now, we're not going to do that much in this class. Maybe later on in the more, um, in the more technical version, you'll get to, um, to, to having to deal with namespaces a little bit. But by and large, we're going to avoid them because they're really not that necessary to understanding information modeling. When our information model comes all from the same schema that we've created, which is mostly what we're going to do in this class, we have the luxury of forgetting about namespaces. But when we do see namespaces, they're going to be represented always the same way. It's some characters followed by a colon that precedes the tag name. So if it was from the Bob tag, or the Bob family, or the Bob schema, it would be B-O-B colon and then the name of the tag. So if we were working in an instance and it had tags from the Bob schema and from the Joe schema, some would be preceded J-O-E colon, some would, would be preceded B-O-B colon. Now, you're not going to see Bob and Joe um, namespaces in this course, but there are two namespaces that you will come across, or at least you're likely to come across. The first one, for sure, you'll come across, and that's the XSL, or the transform namespace. When we start dealing with transform files, you'll see lots of tags that start XSL colon. Those are in the transform namespace. Those are tags that are specific to XSL transforms. We'll come back to that when we get to transforms. The other tag, the other namespace you might see is the one called XS. And the XS namespace is the schema namespace. You're going to see that soon in data types. The data types we see, like ID and string, they're all preceded with a namespace to say that those are defined inside the schema namespace. So we have the idea of a namespace, which is a family affiliation or some grouping of tags, all under the same schema. In most cases, we could ignore it in this course because all of our tags are going to come from the same schema, and we can just leave out that, that uh, namespace colon part of the tag. But when you do see it, it'll always be represented as namespace colon. Hopefully, the name of the namespace will be give you a clue, like XSL stands for XSL. Um, as in transforms, and XS stands for XML schemas. So those are the two that you're likely to see. You may see a few others near the end of the course, and that's the concept of namespaces.